thank you, <clears throat> thank you all very much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I'm very excited to sit here. We've actually had some great news uh, uh, very recently with the company. Uh, we're starting to really kick some goals, and we are unusually a gold producer. We're in fact the only ASX listed gold producer operating in Victoria at the moment. So, um, um, you know, it's pretty exciting to be operating high-grade gold production there. There's a lot of great gold mining going on and typically very high-grade and uh, in fact uh, extremely profitable in, in some cases. <clears throat> now, while I say we are Victorian gold focused, we do have some um, projects in New South Wales as well on the um, Lachlan Fold trend and about um, uh, a little over a year ago we transitioned into uh, becoming a gold explorer and producer in Victoria, which is now the company's main focus. All the assets we own 100% and collectively produced over two and a half million ounces of extremely high grade gold. So, um, you know, gold is where you find it and, and certainly there's been a lot of gold produced from the leases that we hold. <coughs> We're in gold production right now and um, we have got some um, very talented and very experienced operations crew to uh, support the company going forward. The company's market capitalization is 28 million, uh, giving us an enterprise value uh, sub 20 million. So um, uh, uh, I guess um, there's some opportunity for upside. I'll just move on. <clears throat> uh, I'll start off with the expiration um, upside within Kaiser. We hold 100% um, title to the historic Melton Goldfield. Now, the Melton Goldfield sits in between Ballarat and Bendigo on the fabled Bendigo block that's um, um, been the, um, the host of um, the bulk of Victoria's 79 million ounces of production. Uh, the Melton Goldfield has produced over 2 million ounces of gold. 1.7 million ounces of those uh, was from within our leases at 28 grams a tonne. And... Um, that's non-alluvial gold. In fact, Malden produced more gold than Ballarat did from underground sources. So um, it's, a, it's an area that really has fallen off the radar in recent times. And I'm excited to also mention that it's on a granted mining licence and it's an advanced project. It's got a decline running right through the middle of it. It's got power, ventilation, um, and um, is actually ready for production. It also hosts the, uh, the Nuggety Gold Mine, possibly Australia's highest grade gold mine, 300,000 ounces of historic production at 187 grams a tonne. Um, <clears throat> that's um, uh, pretty extraordinary and I'll talk a little bit about the unusual context of that deposit. The A1 mine um, has been in production um, since 1861 and uh, may, may be uh, Australia's highest grade current producing gold mine. We produced 14 grams a tonne recovered uh, in the last quarter. And it has some fantastic exploration upside and I'll try and explain why we think the grade's going to keep rising. The, um, the third asset that we own is the Malden Processing Plant. It's a modern CIP plant that we're in the process of um, uh, upgrading certain aspects of and um, it's operating very well, giving us... Um, better than typically 95% recovery. <clears throat> so um, uh, our strategy right now is um, currently drilling. Uh, yesterday we put out a drill result. Our first drill hole at A1 returned 4.6 metres at 135 grams a tonne gold. That's a 600 gram metre intercept um, and pretty spectacular in anyone's language. Uh, that's in a sort of a near mining uh, target area for us too. So we're looking very much forward to opening that up. <clears throat> uh, Union Hill at Malden is our primary exploration target underground because of the, the, the nature of the ex already uh, developed decline. And, um, and we're also talking to parties about potential uh, toll treatment and joint ventures on, on some of the other assets. So um, I'll launch into Malden to kick off uh, because it really is just bloody exciting. Um, there have been drill results up to 205 grams a tonne that have had very little follow-up. Its, um, its production history is um, extraordinary, you know, nearly an ounce a tonne. 
and as I said, it's extremely advanced. Uh, it would take very little for us to get back into production there from a permitting perspective. Uh, there's power, there's water, there's um, that decline. Uh, so a lot of money has been expended in the past. And this is a location plan showing you where we sit, um, pretty much smack in between Bendigo, Ballarat, and there's Fosterville, uh, and some of the historic production numbers from those gold fields. Uh, I, th I think this is quite interesting, but the Fosterville mine had only produced 290 odd thousand ounces up until 2003. It really is quite a, a modern discovery that it, uh, to, to um, become uh, a high grade producer that it is today. And it speaks of a few things. Firstly, uh, the exploration opportunity in the Victorian gold fields. Um, secondly, the, um, uh, the fact that Fosterville is so profitable, it has opened up many people's eyes to what the potential is to produce from narrow vein, high grade gold mines. The, um, we've been very actively drilling at Malden and we've actually just concluded the exploration drilling phase one with some fantastic um, results, uh, several sort of one ounce plus hits. And uh, that data is now in the, um, uh, with uh, independent engineering group, Mining One, who are doing a resource estimate. So we hope to have a resource out at Malden in the not too distant future. And I'll try and show you where, if that laser beam's pointing there, in that area there, where the decline goes right through, um, there's a bit of historic development and we think there's a strong potential for um, a resource. There was a historic resource and it was pretty impressive, so we're hoping to see what our recent drilling has done to potentially reinstate that and bring that up into a Jork 2012. Um, on this image here also, just up here is the Nuggety Reef I talked about. <clears throat> and what's really quite interesting about Nuggety Reef, apart from being uh, I incredibly high grade, is that it sits on a, 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 a granite diorite contact. And um, Molden actually has got some unusual elements um, that were initially thought to be unique to Molden, called Moldenite, uh, creatively. And uh, it's a uh, gold uh, bismuth um, complex. But what it really tells you is this is more of a traditional um, Bendigo, Ballarat, um, Fosterville style system, whereas this uh, is indicating that perhaps there's been some metamorphosis and some mobilisation. And it's yielded this incredible ore body with very, very little, uh, nearly none, uh, exploration down plunge on that contact zone. So that's a really high priority for us. Uh, that would be a, uh, a massive win if we were able to prove that the Nuggety Reef mineralisation does continue. And it's been a little problematic to drill this from the surface recently. And, um, and I'll show you that, the reason for that in a second. Um, this is a long section just showing, uh, to, to get you the resolution for the grades, I haven't put in Nuggety here, but you can see some really lovely grades sitting down here. Uh, this all body is open-ended. If anyone says, well, Malden was mined out. It certainly wasn't. It continues at depth, just like many of the uh, historic mines in, in Victoria. It's just a matter now for us to um, take it deeper. <clears throat> okay, I'll just move on to the, um, uh, the A1 mine now. Uh, as I said, operating since 1861, possibly one of, if not Australia's longest running gold mines. It's produced 500,000 ounces. It recovered 26 grams a tonne, so its head grade was probably closer to uh, north of 30 grams. Um, and um, we've spent a lot of time and money uh, improving production, de-bottlenecking, and, um, and making this thing more efficient. And as we're getting deeper, we're, we're still amongst where historic miners have been working. And as we're getting deeper, we're finding more and more material has been uh, left behind. And the old timers would have started to find it very difficult from a ventilation, water and power perspective. Now we've got a modern decline, we've uh, spent quite a lot of money and, and um, time and effort on power and ventilation upgrades and that work is ongoing uh, to give this mine a, um, a long future. <clears throat> but um, the numbers are starting to speak for themselves. Um, we became operationally profitable uh, in quarter two 
and um, in quarter three, now we developed quite a healthy margin. As you can see, revenues of seven million with our mining operating costs of 3.2 million. So uh, we, we actually increased our cash balance whilst running two diamond drill rigs. So it's a, you know, uh, many a small junior company's dream is to be a self-funding um, exploration and, and miner. And I'm pleased to say that things are looking very good for us and we certainly see some ongoing upside. So, um, so this is a profitable operation and at $1,150 an ounce Australian um, as our um, operating costs, that's a, that's a very strong margin. So very pleased with that effort. Um, now, the future for this mine, um, as I said, um, we're, we're finding that we're reaching the levels where the old timers couldn't go any, uh, or, or we're really struggling, and that grade is increasing. So um, we're, we're, we've got multiple reef systems for development in, fa in front of us now that um, uh, have visible gold. So we're expecting to see a lot of high grade production going forward. And we threw a couple of deep diamond holes right down the die right here just to see, make sure it continues so that the future investment we're putting into the company was, was well founded. And I'm pleased to say that there's probably up to 10 years, you know, I'm not allowed to make future looking statements, but um, um, it's, a, it's a pretty healthy deep hole. Um, we've just beaten that drill result yesterday, as I said, 4.6 metres at 135 grams a tonne uh, in our first drill hole. The diamond rig is back here and drilling out an area that um, has had very little historic drilling. It was a bit of a shadow of a large stope, so it couldn't be drilled through in the past. So um, to punch a hole into that area and get such a number is, is fantastic. Um, and there's also lateral upside. Um, there, there are other re uh, diorite plugs um, on strike and near us. And um, you can see some of the workings have been pushing out into these other ones and uh, there's very, very little drilling into any of these. So uh, we will be um, putting our creative hats on and seeing what we get out, out the side and, and seeing if we can expand on that. So some uh, pretty exciting upside on that front. And the processing plant, um, very well operated. Again, a very talented team running that. Um, interestingly, um, it's my opinion that you couldn't replace our mill for our market cap you would be struggling to get a, another mill permitted in a long period of time in this area of Victoria. And we're surrounded by many operators. And uh, despite making the money that I was talking about with that, that mine, um, we're only filling our own mill about 20%. So there's a huge amount of upside in the area, which is also why we're pursuing the Malden Goldfield, which is only two kilometres away from our mill, to, uh, to complete and fill our mill. But um, uh, the, there's a lot of strategic value in, in, this, um, in this mill. And there's a, there's a photo of it. Um, and I won't talk about the New South Wales gold exploration, as exciting as that is. Okay, uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> Gotta get you a better round.